She literally just like sat her own. Okay, here we go. Um, today we're doing what's called U substitution. What U substitution is, is when you integrate something complicated like um, x squared plus 6x cubed. It's the chain rule, right? Okay. Well, you have to have something else in here like 2x plus 6, and you're going to integrate it then. And you're going, ooh, that looks kind of complicated. Well, you're right. It is a little bit complicated, but when we do U substitution, it makes it much easier. Okay. So, this is the main function. This is the extra part we'll get to in a second, but this is the main function we're integrating. We're not going to worry about this so much. So if we're integrating this function, the inside of it is what becomes u. Ashley, are you paying attention? Okay, because this is, like, super important. This is major league stuff here today. It's too bad that Evelyn is gone to miss this. Well, Whitney's never here, so she picks up on all this pretty good. Okay, so u is going to be x squared plus 6x. Then we have to take the derivative of u. What is the derivative of u? 2x plus 6. Thus, that thing sticking there. dx, actually. 2x plus 6 dx. So, we rewrite the integral as u to the third du. Now, it's easy to integrate u to the third. Okay, we did this last week. How do we integrate u to the third? u to the fourth with a one-fourth plus c. Okay, which equals one-fourth x squared plus 6x to the fourth plus c. If you would take the derivative of this, you'd get this. See how the chain rule is involved here. 4 times 1 fourth cancels that out. And you have x squared plus 6x. So when you take the derivative of x squared plus 6x, you get 2x plus 6. Okay? Chain rule. You remember the chain rule. That's what we're doing. So your first section that you're doing today, hey, because Mr. Ricky's going to come on down here in a few minutes, so I would not have your phone out, or he'll take it with you. So in the first section that we do, you have to pick out what is going to be your U. So in this one, what would be your U? What's in your second parentheses, because this is the one to the power. And this, if you take the derivative of this, this is what you get. So this is definitely your U. Whoa. This is definitely your U, which is choice A. Okay? U substitution. What would be your U in this one? What is underneath the square root? So this. Okay? We're good? All right, let's just do the integral of this one. So this would be the integral of u to the one-half power du. Because if you take the derivative of this, you get this, right? Okay. So how do we integrate that? u would be to the what power after we integrate? 3 over 2. So what would we put in front? two-thirds plus c. So it's two-thirds times x to the fourth minus 3x cubed plus 8x squared to the three-halves plus c. That's how we integrate using u substitution. Okay? All right. So let's integrate this bad boy. 
What is you? You're so good, Ashlyn. Ln of x. What's du? What's the first derivative of the ln of x? 1 over x dx. So, what this really is, is the integral of the ln of x squared times 1 over x dx. That's just another way of writing this. Okay? So, this is the integral of u squared du. How do we integrate that? u to the third, one third in front, plus c. Which one says one third ln of x cubed plus c? Choice b. Okay? You guys are so smart. Okay? No multiple choice in this one. What is u? U is 2x. What would du be? 2 dx. I don't see a 2 dx here. So when you don't have, and it, it, we only do this for whole numbers, when you don't have a 2 in front of there, you put a 2 in front of there. But if I put a 2 here, I have to get rid of it somehow by putting a 1 half outside. We're not we're not at the answer yet. Oh, okay. We're still building the problem. Okay. So if I put a two on the inside, I have to put a one half on the outside to cancel it out. So it's the same size. Okay. So really we have one half the integral of e to the u du now, correct? Because u is two x. Yes. And then du is 2dx. Okay. What's the integral of e to the u? e to the u. So we have 1 half e to the u plus c. So it's 1 half e to the 2x plus c. Okay. So, because if you look at this and you... And you integrate this, or you take the derivative of this, what's the derivative of this? Well, you take, and it's e to the 2x, and then you take the derivative of this times this, and you get e to the 2x. Okay? Yes. All right. What the heck is you here? You don't like this, do you? No likey. What's you? Ashlyn, what do you think you is? You've been right on all day. What do you think you is? No. No, no. I don't see I don't see any. No, no, no. These aren't you. This is these are answers. What's you up here? No. No. There is no U. <laughs> there is a U. E is X, one. The U is the denominator. One plus E to the 2X. That's the complicated part of this. U is generally the complicated part. Okay. What's the first derivative of that boy? It would be 2e to the 2x. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm, mm hmm I have an issue with this one. Oh, yep, now I know. Now I know. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, so on this one, 
This one is an inverse trig function, which we learned about inverse trig functions right here. So I put this too I put this too high, this question too high. Sorry. We'll come back to this okay. in just a little bit. Let's do this one first and we'll we'll then we'll talk about inverse trig functions. Okay, let's do this one. Now, this is an, an indefinite integral, but this is a definite integral. All right. So, this is since this is a definite integral, um, we actually have to find a number answer in the end. Okay? So let's do this. What is u? And after the last little thing, 1 minus 4x squared. No? And du would be? Negative 8x dx. Ooh, this is 8x dx. So if I put a negative here, then you got to be a negative on the outside. So we have negative 1 times the integral of 1 over the square root of u du, which I would rather write as negative 1 times the integral of u to the negative 1 half du. All right. Let's integrate. What do we, how do we integrate? It's u to the one half with a negative one front, u to the one half, and then if you take, you need to multiply this by what? By two to get rid of that one half when you multiply it out front type of thing, plus c. Okay. So it's negative 2 times the square root of 1 minus 4x squared. And it's not plus c because it's a definite integral, Mr. Bershbach. And you have to go from 0 to 1 fourth. So since it's a definite integral, plug in the 1 fourth. So it's negative 2 times the square root of 1 minus 4 times 1 fourth squared minus negative 2 times the square root of 1 minus 4 times 0 squared. What's 1 fourth squared? 1 16th times 4 is 1 fourth. 1 minus 1 fourth is? So it's negative 2 square root of 3 fourths minus a negative 2 times the square root of 1. So the square root, so it's negative 2 square root of 3 over 2, the 2's cancel, plus 2. So it's 2 minus the square root of 3. There is some heavy calculus for you. Okay. Now. We are not going to worry about these. We're going to worry about these. These are inverse trig functions. Okay? So, the inverse of sine is 1 over 1 minus x squared inside a square root. The inverse of cosine is negative 1 over 1 minus x squared. And the inverse of tangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared. This one we'll see the most of, then this one, then this one. If they throw something like this at you, you just, you just swag it. Okay. You know, I mean, you've, you've got this. I mean, we can write these down, but this, to have them, this is very rare that they ever put these on the AP test. Always on the AP test. Sometimes on the AP test, always, 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 you'll see an inverse tangent function. Okay, so if we see this one, okay, 
This is a tangent because there's no square root. Okay? So we have 1 over 1 plus what squared? What goes in the parentheses? 3x, exactly. So the u is going to be the 3x. Okay? So basically, the inverse tangent of u is 1 over 1 plus u squared. Okay? So, so if we integrate this, this is the tangent of 3x to the 1 third, negative 1 third. Okay? Because the u was 3x tangent of u. So it's the inverse tangent of that. Okay? So we take the inverse tangent of 3 times 1 third, which is 1, minus the inverse tangent of 3 times negative 1 third, which is negative 1. Where is the inverse, where is tangent equal to 1 at on the unit circle? Pi over 4. Because it's square root 2 over 2 over square root, square root 2 over 2. Minus, where is the tangent equal to negative 1 at? Well, that's a negative pi over 4. So the answer in the end is pi over 2. oof -da. Okay, let's go back up to this one. Yeah, it is B. You're right. Why is it B? B because that's a tangent. So U is equal to, because we rewrite this as the integral of E to the X over 1 plus E to the X squared. So U equals E to the X. So it's the inverse tangent of E to the X plus C. Okay. You're so funny, Ashlyn. Okay. This one is not a trig one. So so let's let's do let's do this one. Okay? Ln of x is u. What's du? One over x. So this is really the integral of ln of x squared 1 over x dx, which is the integral of u squared du from 1 to e. So how do we do that? How do we integrate u squared? So it's one third ln of x from one to e. So it's one third the ln of e minus one third the ln of one. What's the ln of e equal to? One, because they're inverses of each other. So it's one third minus. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, there. So that's one cubed, which is still one third. All right. The ln of one cubed. So remember with natural logs, this goes to here and multiplies times each other. They cancel. So it's one.